Since ancient days, people have been benefiting from enemas. I'm going to go through the glorious, glorious, miraculous healing benefits of doing a coffee retention enema. Uh, you you really want to stay tuned into this. I've been doing coffee enemas for a long time. I've I've advised many other people on how to do them, all with wildly successful results. I might add, uh, there's nothing quite like coffee enemas for kickstarting your detoxification process. If you're a little overweight, uh, you want to detoxify your body. You're going to want to stay tuned into this video. I'm in high vibrations right now to bring you this message. I just juiced some rainbow Swiss chard, which contains super anti super oxide dismutase, a master antioxidant this is what we all need in abundance to heal our condition you know the eye the eye is supposed to retain a small amount of superoxide dismutase SOD and currently uh, not very many people have this in the eye and this is the reason why we have blurry vision and, and poor vision uh, so if we can stimulate this process by doing a coffee enema and then flood the tree in the cells with live amino acids in abundance along with doing this process you're talking about supremely advanced healing here. Uh, th this is supremely healing to the body on every aspect. To heal the body, we've got to start at the root and the base, the colon and the liver. You've got to detoxify your colon and your liver. You've got to restore the alkalinity to the body. You've got to restore the intestinal floor to the gut. And you've got to remove the parasites. You've got to remove the nanoparticle metals out of the body. And coffee enema is going to kickstart this. I actually don't recommend people start with coffee enema. If you if you have never juiced and you are not on your well on your way to getting healthy, I challenge you to watch my first first part of this video, Advanced Healing Through Parasite Removal, and just begin to juice. Uh, because coffee enemas are a little bit more advanced into the healing phases. We don't just jump in with getting healthy tomorrow. If, if, you, if you're nowhere near where you need to be health-wise, don't start with the coffee enema. That's my advice regarding this, because these, these can be too harsh for people. Uh, people can have very negative experiences if their body is extremely, extremely toxic. Uh, but please Please know, yes, in an emergency situation, you can absolutely do one. Let me go through the benefits of them. You're going to want to stay tuned into this because there's a lot of disinformation out there about coffee enemas. I'm about to break this down for you so that we can uh, dispel some positive vibrations uh, in this matter because I'm really, really tired of all of the disinformation shared regarding the coffee enemas. I really wish that there had been a video like this when I first began uh, doing my coffee enemas. I'm going to show you at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how I prepare my coffee because I'm going to do one tonight. Uh, please know that with today's toxic environment, I was exposed to the air some today, and I, I can feel this. Uh, my, my aura can feel the toxins oftentimes in the air uh, that are raining down on us, and I'm breathing these in, and I am also uh, ingesting these through the dermal layer of my skin, and we have to take measures in today's toxic world to detoxify from these, and the coffee enema, coffee retention enema is one way using the green coffee bean is one one way that you can do this, you please know that you can't just use any coffee, and I will go through the uh, coffee that I use as well in this video. Uh, singlet oxygen atoms cause oxidation in the body tissues. An example of oxidation occurs when a bite, when we take a bite out of the apple and you let the apple sit out. This is the, this is the same oxidative damage that is occurring in our body. Coffee contains powerful antioxidants that prevent oxidation. Uh, they're particularly helpful for the liver, which is highly susceptible to oxidant damage. Unlike other, unlike other antioxidants such as vitamin C, uh, vitamin E, apolipoic acid, uh, these antioxidants are far more yang. In the Chinese medical term, it's a great advantage today because the body is usually too much, too much yin. Uh, and adding more yin antioxidants often makes the problem much, much worse. This is this is the reason why the people are taking antioxidants currently and they're not working. Because the base and the root is locked down and toxic. We've got to remove the parasites from the colon. We've got to remove the 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 layers and layers of sludge and putrefaction that is backed up in our colon. Your colon today is toxic. 99.9% .9 of the world's colon is filthy. I, I know this because mine was filthy. I had been consuming acidic forming, processed, packaged, radiated, genetically modified foods for far too long and this th these toxins store up in the liver and in the colon and we have to work to remove these. Uh, a, a nutritionally balancing program, a healthy lifestyle and incorporating a coffee retention 
helps to remove oxidant sources. Uh, these include minerals such as iron, copper, uh, manganese, aluminum, among others. Uh, th this coffee enema is going to help increase the alkalinity of the entire intestinal tract. This is due to enhanced bile flow. See, when you, when you take the coffee in this way, this coffee is going to hit that hemorrhoidal vein, and it's going to stimulate the pr production of bile. It, th this is going to wrap and contract, and I'm telling you, we've got to start doing this. It also helps destroy many other types of infections in the small and large intestine. This can help improve the quality of the flora of the intestines. In the late 70s and early 80s, researchers of the lab of Lee Wattenberg identified salts of palmitic acid, Kawol, that's K-A-H-W-E-O-L, and Kafestol, that's K-A-F-E-S-T-O-L, palmitate in coffee. These, these are the two potent acids that are in coffee that are supremely healing. Uh, this, this specifically stimulates the S-glutathione transferase, which is an important enzyme in the liver. It's, it's, the, it's the part of the major detoxification process of the liver. This is what we all need to be stimulating. It helps to bind uh, many toxins from the bloodstream. Uh, for this reason, the S-glutathione transferase is an important mechanism to, to help us uh, beat cancer, uh, to help us beat any kind of sickness or disease. Adding coffee beans to the diets of mice enhanced glutathione S-transferase 600% in the liver and 700% in the small bowel. Uh, similar stimulation by coffee of glutathione S transferase in humans is probable. Dr. Max Gerson, MD, a major proponent of the use of coffee enemas, wrote that Hubner and Meyer of Gothenburg University, Germany, had shown in animal models that rectal administration of coffee would dilate bile ducts and promote bile flow. Theophylline and theo theobromine, a major constituents of coffee, theobromine, that's T-H-E-O-B-R-O-M-I-N-E. -E. These are two major constituents of coffee. They help to dilate the blood vessels and they counter inflammation in the gut. The palmitates that are in this coffee specifically trigger and enhance this glutathione S transferase, which is responsible for the removal of many, many toxins from the blood. Uh, the water that is in the coffee is going to help stimulate the, the peristolic action and the movement and the bile stimulation. And this is going to help remove toxic, toxic substances uh, specifically from the duodenum and upper intestine through the intestine and out through the, the rectum. Uh, the caffeine that is in coffee, see, there's natural health care practitioners today that, that promote the, promote the uh, coffee enemas, but then there's a handful that don't, and there's, there's a raw food guru that says, no, we don't need the caffeine in this way. Well, this would be somebody that does not, does not know how to heal the body for extremely sick and extreme, extremely inflamed conditions. Uh, people today are very, very sick, and they're very, very inflamed, and you have to know how the body works to know how to heal the body. And the palmitic acid that is in this coffee specifically triggers this healing because it triggers the detoxification. That's what the caffeine does. It's, n it's definitely not the same as drinking the coffee. Drinking coffee is quite toxic to us. Uh, but, but the, the, uh, the colon specifically works to filter out impurities and toxins, so it's not actually going to absorb the toxins that are every day occurring in all coffees across all the world because there are some toxic substances in coffee, and this is the reason why it's very, very dangerous for even internal coffee consumption in large doses. But the, the colon works to protect us from this. Uh, so it's not going to absorb the things that are found in coffee that aren't healthy in large quantities. And I'll go through more of that in a minute, but uh, let me read to you the let me read to you a little bit more about the caffeine. The editors of the Physiological Chemistry and Physics stated that caffeine enemas cause dilation of bile ducts, which facilitates excretion of toxic cancer breakdown products by the liver, and the dialysis of toxic products from blood across the colonic wall. This property of caffeine, when administered rectally, is called a choleretic. A choleretic is a substance that increases the bile flow. While other agents classified as choleretics increase the bile flow from the liver, most do little to enhance detoxification enzymes as they do not ensure the passage of bile from the intestines out the rectum. 
bile is normally reabsorbed up to nine or ten times before working its way out of the intestines through the feces in our feces. The enzyme enhancing ability of the coffee enema is unique. It's very, very unique because it does not allow for reabsorption of toxic bile by the liver across the gut wall. This is this means it's a powerful means of detoxifying the bloodstream through existing enzyme systems in the liver and small bowel. Uh, because clinical practice has shown that coffee enemas to be well tolerated by patients when used as frequently as every four hours. This is how Gerson does does it in the Gerson uh, clinics. Uh, that uh, can, People with cancer can do four to six coffee enemas a day, but please know that it takes many nutrients for this for this system to run. So we have to flood the, the trillion of cells that we have in our electric body with live amino acids. So you have to have a fully masticating juicer. If you're wanting to get extreme with the coffee enemas, I, I actually don't don't even recommend a coffee enema if you don't have a fully masticating juicer. You need to be you need to have juice two or three days prior to your first coffee enema. If if you haven't, don't go full force into the coffee enemas because you, you need to get serious with this if you want to heal your body, if you want to reverse some can, some damage that you've inflicted on your body. Don't there's no shade of gray with coffee enemas. You can't just say, Oh, I'm gonna do one a week and I'm gonna continue to eat the, my acidic forming food the rest of the week. No, it doesn't work like that. Uh, change your lifestyle and simply start incorporating these and this is how you step up the healing reaction that the body can naturally stimulate on its own when we give it the proper nutrients to do this. Uh, the coffee is a wonderful kickstart for the entire system. It's somewhat an uh, esoteric concept. However, the, the remedies and procedures are able to cause a yang effect, uh, contracting the effect contracting the effect that activates an area of the body while causing few adverse reactions when done in moderation. Coffee in the rectum is one of the best procedures to kickstart or crank or jumpstart the digestive system in particular. Uh, this is like d turning it over an engine in a car. You're, that's what this coffee is going to do. It's just going to kickstart this. Uh, it's going to kickstart. It's going to yang stimulants include supplements and herbs such as turmeric, garlic, cayenne, ginseng. However, I really don't recommend ginseng today because most of us quite toxic. Why? Because our soil over our entire earth is quite toxic. So if you want to heal your condition, become a farmer and start growing, start growing these divine medicinals and grow them inside. Grow them in a small space. You can grow a lot of stuff in a small space. There's no excuse for not getting healthy, folks. The coffee contains selenium. Uh, selenium is needed by we're all deficient in selenium, I'll just say that. Few foods contain this particularly necessary compound, which is, by the way, which is not well absorbed by the mouth. Uh, it's better absorbed through the rectum. Uh, the, this is a primary reason for the enzymatic activity of coffee upon the liver detoxification pathways. Uh, they need to do some more research on that because there's not enough research specifically on some of what I am referring to, but there is on much of it. So do your own research regarding this, but anybody that's going to tell you that coffee enemas are not safe, they don't know what they're talking about, and more than, li more than likely they have never done one. I'm going to show you towards the end of this video how I prepare mine because I haven't done one today as I have mentioned. I'm going to do one after this video. This is, this is how much I love them. Uh, I don't do one daily, please know, but I do one when I feel like I need to, and I do at least one or two every week. I'll go through three days where I'll just do coffee enemas that, you know, for, for back to back on three days where I'll just consume alive amino acids and juice. And, and when you're, when you're doing this and you're also ingesting and applying and diffusing essential oils, you can literally rocket your vibrations to the stars. This is, this is going to help detoxify not just the root, but it's going to travel up the root all the way to the energy vortexes that are within the body. We've got about 13 vibrational energy vortexes. Some people call these chakras. The chakra is simply a Sanskrit word for wheel or vortex, and these have to be balanced in the body. Everybody wants to decalcify the pineal gland. Well, you can't decalcify the pineal gland unless you get all of the other vibrational vortexes balanced within the body. You can't do that without kick-starting it with detoxification of your liver and your colon because the liver and the colon is toxic. Uh, coffee and... Uh, so coffee also contains potassium, uh, potassium that can be absorbed through the wall of the colon. The colon. This is a better form of potassium than found in most fruits. The What's found in most fruits are uh, from the superphosphate fertilizers used on most, most fruit, fruit crops today, and even the organic fruit contains this toxic form of potassium. See, this, this potassium is not being absorbed because it's not the right kind. 
and the coffee is completely different and you're going to absorb the potassium this way. Coffee neutralizes many harmful frequencies of illnesses in the body. Uh, the, the patients of home, home, homeopathy, uh, homeopathic doctors uh, tend to tell the, their patients never to drink coffee if they're taking a little, if they're taking a flower remedy or a homeopathic tincture of something. They tell them not to drink coffee because to coffee is toxic in this form. It's going to affect the vibrations of these uh, divine essences. But when when you rectally retain it, it's completely different. Uh, the coffee can negate many of the effects of the vibrational remedies, including homeopathic remedies, if taken internally. Uh, th this is a very important reason for using coffee enemas. The coffee se seems able to clear a wide range of harmful, subtle energies in the human system in a way that no other plant or animal substance can do. Repeated use of coffee retention implant clears these vibrational frequencies at deeper and deeper levels every single time you do another coffee enema. You're going to go a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. Uh, this is what we want to do. If you want to really repair some damage that you've inflicted on your body, get get hardcore with the coffee enemas. I'm serious. Uh, juice and juice in abundance. The third day of your juicing, start with a water, an aloe, half water, half aloe, whole leaf, organic aloe. Uh, retain this for 15 minutes, and then the very next day, go right into a coffee enema. I don't recommend people start with the coffee enema, especially if they haven't been juicing, because this is often too, too harsh for the body. We have a hard time retaining it. Oftentimes people will retain it and then they won't be able to expel it all back out so it will stay in the body and just continue to recirculate the toxins within the body. And this would be because the body is extremely, extremely dehydrated. If you do a coffee enema and you don't, and you don't excrete it all out at the end of 15 minutes or however long you decide you want to hold it, uh, the recommended time for holding it is 12 to 15 minutes. Uh, I recommend you hold it for the full time, and I'm going to give you some tips on how you're going to be able to do that. And, and you're going to want to stay tuned because you really want to be juicing an apple. Uh, you want to be juicing an apple and some ginger and a lemon before you do your coffee and maybe a few carrots. Just make, make a juice blend before you, about an hour before you juice and include lots of ginger. We need to calm the system down because the system doesn't need to have any gas or bloating in it. You, it's very difficult to retain a coffee enema if you're full of gas. Uh, if you normally pass gas throughout the day, multiple times throughout the day, day, make sure that you juice some ginger before you start this process because we want to work to eliminate some of this gas. So get, let this gas flow out of you before you lay down and relax and meditate to do your coffee enema. It's... Uh, It, coffee helps to protect us against toxins. Coffee contains some toxic metals such as lead, cadmium, and some toxic alkaloids. Also, <clears throat> ground coffee may be somewhat rancid. Most of it is. Uh, I'll go through the types of coffee we need to use. It contains polyunsaturated oils that can quickly become rancid. Let me just show you now, or I may forget, because I don't want to forget the types of coffee you can use now. The The... S.A. Wilson, the Gerson Protocol calls for a specific brand of coffee. This is a wonderful brand because this is a green coffee bean. This is a bean that's not roasted or burned. We don't need beans that are roasted or burned, folks, so any organic coffee is not going to cut it. Uh, this is one that I have found that I have found to be wildly beneficial. And I, the reason I, I uh, was turned on to this one is because I can buy it local. Uh, so this is one called Cafe Sanora Organics. And you'll notice there at the bottom, they've got a stomach friendly roasting process. Now this is the breakfast blend, but I also have the signature roast and the one of them is a little bit darker. And so the darker one contains more caffeine. These darker roasts contain more caffeine. So I'll do, I'll save the, the darker roast for my morning and afternoon coffee enemas. And I will do the one with the less caffeine towards the evening and bedtime. You can absolutely do one of these before you go to bed and it can be quite a relaxing experience. Many times I will even include lavender and chamomile in my coffee enema before I uh, retain this right before I go to bed, and you can expel these toxins out right before you sleep, and you can sleep quite blissful. Uh, you're going to have many divine lucid dreams with the, with, with the incorporation of these divine coffee enemas. Uh, 
the, the colon is designed to absorb nutrients. This is what I was mentioning earlier while filtering out and leaving toxic substances behind. And the, that's, what, that's what happens inside the colon. Uh, a healthy colon is quite amazing in its ability to absorb nutrients while protecting the body from a wide variety of toxic substances. See, we're not absorbing nutrients in our colon currently because there's layers and layers of this sludge and putrefaction and parasites in our colon. Uh, we've got, we've literally got nanometals in our colon. Uh, this is the reason why drinking coffee is somewhat toxic, but coffee used in an enema retention is much less so. In fact, we've seen little toxicity from repeated coffee retention enemas, while those who drink coffee regularly exhibit some toxicity simply from drinking the beverage. Coffee is toxic, and the caffeine is toxic to us in this manner. We need the caffeine to stimulate the bioproduction. It is... Another reason coffee enemas are, are beneficial is they're very meditational. You're laying down for 15 minutes and you're simply letting go. You're letting the energy flow. You're going to literally connect with these vibrations that are occurring within the, within the body. This, this hemorrhoidal vein is going to wrap and contract and it's going to stimulate this peristaltic action of the, of the, of the intestines. And this is what we want. We want to be getting in rhythmic pattern with this and while you're while you're laying back completely letting go, you are you are in the zone that this is going to heal your body from the from the bottom of your feet to the head to, to the crown of your head because that's exactly what the coffee enemas will do and get in this vibration that these coffee enemas are going to completely heal your body thought carries vibration and frequency so we need to be thinking positive while we while we're letting go in, into these coffee enemas because this is how you make the coffee enema wildly 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 healing uh, coffee Enemas help relax the sympathetic or fight-or-flight nervous system. Many people report this. That actually may seem quite odd since coffee does contain a caffeine, which is a stimulant. But possible reasons for the relaxation of the sympathetic nervous system include stimulation of two important parasympathetic organs, the liver and the large intestine, and the nutrients that are within the coffee, removal of irritating toxins from the body rapidly and thoroughly, and it just simply relaxes the downward motion of the energy of the body. That's what it does. It also uh, will, it, over, over time, it will also improve your hydration. Uh, we, we are all dehydrated today because we're not drinking the proper form of water or we're not drinking enough water or we're not drinking enough live vibrational amino acids such, such as juice. You guys know if you're a subscriber that I'm an advocate of juicing and juicing in abundance because we are, the reason we are sick today is because our cells are malnourished. Overgrowth of candida fungal parasitic nanoparticle condition has gone awry all up in the temple and we've got to remove the toxins and we've got to flood the cells with the nourishment that they need. Uh, it improves the energy. Energy moves downward and it helps all of the energy centers, all of these vibrational vortexes to become more active and more balanced. It balances everything. It reduces auto-intoxication. Auto-intoxication is the production of toxins within the body, usually due to the action of bacteria and yeast upon partially digested food. See, this food sits in the gut. Uh, most of this is a result of fermentation. It's going to ferment. It's going to rot. It's going to putrefy in a lot of people's large intestines. Uh, that's where a lot of this occurs. This causes gas, bloating, foul-smelling stools. This is the reason your stool uh, smells today. This is the reason why your gas reeks so bad. Uh, these parasites are literally excreting this nastiness up inside you and then it's coming out of us. Uh, trust me, when you detoxify your body, you're not going to be stinking like you stink now. Uh, the, by cleansing the colon of the yeast and the parasites and other pathogenic organisms, this increases the bioflow, so coffee enemas greatly reduce auto-intoxication. Uh, the, 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 the people that are against the coffee enemas will tell you that uh, we, we don't have an issue with our colon and our liver. And see, this is disinformation. Uh, all forms of healing starts at the base. Uh, start at the base. Vi 
balance all of the energy centers all the way up to the crown of the head, including in the pineal gland, and get everything in rhythmic pattern. Uh, the pineal needs to be secreting high, 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 and this runs from the bottom of the feet to the crown of the head and back up, back over and over again, including we have two, we have two additional hearts really in our body, our hands and our feet. These are pumps for the body for energy. And when you learn these, this is how you learn to increase this electromagnetic energy auric field that can radiate out of the temple out of the body we've got to increase this so that we can, can we can not get inflicted with all of the stuff that they are trying to inflict us with such as the toxins in the air increase your auric energy field that radiates out of your vessel uh, by healing your body and by doing these coffee enemas and by consuming live amino acids and essential oils diffusing essential oils plant vibrations are what's going to do it folks it's going to reduce the density of the body. Toxic metals and excess and other poisons in the body actually increase its den density a little bit. Removing toxic metals and some toxic chemicals decreases the density of the body. This is helpful for healing. It's going to help reduce yeast and other parasites from the colon. It's going to assist the lymphatic system. Uh, coffee enemas greatly assist lymphatic drainage. Uh, these are impor extremely important lymph glands along certain areas of the small intestine. Although coffee solution does not reach typically reach this far, the coffee enema appears to assist the payer's patch due to reflex effects described uh, that I just described. That it's it's going to stimulate the. Uh, it's going to stimulate this peristolic action that's going to stimulate the bile and it's going to work to remove the toxins from the body. So it assists in lymphatic system detoxification. Uh, I will put a link where you can read a little bit more on that. It, there's a link you can click in called uh, Payers Patches, P-E-Y-E-R-S Patches, that talks specifically about the uh, assisting the lymphatic system. There's a lot of research that's been done on this, but you can't find it this most of the time if you just do a simple start page engine search, uh, because a lot of disinformation is going to pop up on the first couple of pages uh, that's going to share some some unfactual information. You've got to really search far and wide to find the factual information on, on the benefits of the coffee enemas, but they have been known since ancient days. Uh, Jesus knew the benefits of an enema. Please know this. Uh, it written on pyramid walls in, in ancient text that we, we know about is the benefits of the retention enema. It improves skin. If you want to have glowing, radiant skin, We've got to remove the toxins from the body. Uh, our skin is our largest organ. If our colon is toxic, this causes skin eruptions including dermatitis, acne, dandruff, eczema, psoriasis. Uh, if you've got dandruff or you've got a little psoriasis or you've got eczema or just acne sometimes, you've got a toxic colon. We've got to, we've got to work to remove the, the, the toxins from the colon. It's very, uh, very wonderful for the brain. Uh, the, the stimulation of the colon reflexes to the brain is another possible reason for the beneficial effects on the brain. Uh, the caffeine may be a factor as this, although not much is absorbed from the colon. The, the, most of the caffeine is simply just used for uh, the stimulation of this bile production. Uh, it acts as an astringent. It, it's going to literally help peel the top layer of sludge and, and, and putrefaction that's, that's inflaming our mucous membrane. The enema mechanically washes out the colon, removing toxic substances and often nests of parasites, bacteria, yeast, colony, and other debris. Enemas also stimulate the colon slightly by dilating a little and often by altering its temperature somewhat, either making it a little hotter or colder. Uh, this is beneficial too if we can stimulate the, if we can do hot cold therapy and with your, uh, dry brush your skin every morning before you get up and then jump in the shower in a non-fluoridated clean water shower and turn your water really warm and then turn it back ice cold and get some of this stimulated to where you can increase the this superoxide dismutase uh, many many different angles not just the coffee enemas do this uh, please know that shaga tea goji berry tea all of these divine medicinal uh, rainbow swiss chard the musk melon seeds all of these contain superoxide dismutase and this is what we need to increase in the body uh, to stimulate some healing. Coffee enemas is only one way, but I think it's one of the best ways. 
It's going to help clean out these so-called pockets uh, or diverticuli that are in the colon. Uh, if recommended, let me let me just show you how I I do mine now. I think that's enough on the benefits, although I could continue reading page after page. I will put a link for some of the information I was reading because there's a lot of wonderful information on it. However, uh, there's really not an all-inclusive page where you can go and get answers to questions and whatnot, so hopefully one day I will have a uh, website. Maybe somebody could help me transcribe some of my videos, and I will just have this information available for free about essential oils, juicing, coffee enemas, just the whole nine yards needs to be in one location, and people need to be able to easily access this information rather than having to go to a different site for every little thing. Uh, we need a one-stop place for this, and it needs to be free, and it needs to be a community where we're all just helping one another uh, get healthy, and that's my dream to, to do that one day, and I will do that. Uh, the the Start with two quarts, okay, a two-quart bag. This is my really old bag that I've had for a long time. Now, I will give you some advice on the bag that you buy. Don't just go down to your local CVS or Walgreens and buy the bag that you see on the shelf there in the in the vaginal douche area. Usually is where they keep their coffee enemas, their their, their enemas bags. Uh, don't, don't buy this one because this one's going to fall apart real quickly. Spend a little bit, a few more dollars, and go to a specific medical supply store and buy a really good bag, or you can find these bags online too. A good bag goes for between 15 and 20 bucks. Uh, this one was $25, and this is the one that I'm using now. And this is a 3.2, uh, you can't see it very good, I'm sorry, but it's a 3.2 liter bag is, is what that one is because when, when, after you've done the two quarts for a little while and retain just the two quarts, you can increase how much you're, you're retaining because it's going to go deeper, deeper into the colon. Our colon wraps around many of our organs and, and yes, it definitely can hold two quarts, but it can hold a lot more than this. And when you, when you get into it, like I'm using coffee enemas right now to, correct some of my DNA. Uh, I'm, I'm using coffee enemas now to deliver some oxygen to parts of my brain that currently don't have any oxygen. We've got entire systems, we've got entire areas of our brain that we're not even using. You're not even tapped into all your divine power and energy because your brain isn't oxygenated. Uh, we, we, have, we have toxified the body for far too long, and we need to wake up to this fact. Uh, when you awaken and you start to include coffee enemas like I'm referring to about, this is how you activate some of this divine energy that the body, that the body can radiate. Uh, the body radiates and resonates in divine vibrations. Uh, you have to connect with the highest vibration for this to occur, which is love. You have to silence the mind, eliminate the chaos, confusion, fear, worry, and doubt. And you have to connect to the highest vibration. Uh, you do this by taking your shoes off and getting firmly planted in the soil. Connect with the earth. Connect with the birds, the bees, the butterflies, and the trees. Connect with the sun and sun gaze for hours every day. They're going to tell you to only sun gaze for, you know, no more than 30 minutes or this will hurt your eyes. Well, some days I gaze for two or three hours, and this is how I retain my energy. Uh, I don't need to even eat when I, when I sun gaze for long periods of time, and that's, that's how much the energy the sun is going to provide you because that's what the sun, sun does. We have a connection just like the earth has with the sun, and when you get in rhythmic pattern with this is when you can really, really awaken and vibrate all of these vortexes within the body. Anything is possible. Possible. You're locked down now up inside a, a matrix, a prison planet, and the coffee enema is literally going to allow you to ascend out of this. Uh, you're going to ascend out of a lot of misery simply by silencing the mind. Coffee enema is going to bring you some peace of mind because you're going to feel better. You know, when we start feeling a little bit better about ourselves, we have a little bit more energy, we, we know we've expelled some toxins out, this really does a lot for the frame of mind and, and the 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 overall outlook uh it really will because you're you're going to feel so blissful after you expel these toxins out you're going to want to go back and do one the very next day that's what happened to me i, I had a kind of a bad experience the very first time i was very very toxic and i hadn't juiced enough and so i was dehydrated and so i retained about half of the coffee inside me it didn't come out for a few hours later and the, when I when I first put the coffee in, a lot of air went inside me, and so I had to retain a lot of air, and this was quite, quite uncomfortable. 
so I don't want you to have to suffer from this. I'm going to probably have to take a drink here in a minute because my throat is getting dry and I've got a drink back there. So if I have to get up and there's a little pause, that's the reason why. I had an exciting day today. Uh, my dog helped uh, rescue this little boy and so there was a lot of excitement here today. One of the one of the vicious dogs that somebody keeps chained up on a leash uh, got got loose and was attacking an uh, eight-year-old child and th this this is insanity that people keep their dogs on leashes and I just happened to be walking my dog at the time, Sunshine, and uh, I, I didn't even know that the dog was off the leash but before I knew it I heard the child screaming and Sunshine instantly reacted by tugging the leash and so I just let him go because he was going to go anyway and so I just let go of the leash and then I started running over there and I could see an eight-year-old boy was, I didn't know he was eight-year-old at the time, I, uh, I found that out later, but he, w he was screaming, and this dog was biting his leg, and Sunshine swooped right in, and I'm telling you what, he took care of this dog real fast. I didn't even know my dog had this in him. See, this is how divine um, things manifest when you get in rhythmic patterns with, with the earth and the universe, uh, because Sunshine came into my life a blessing. He had been abandoned and literally just dropped off, and it was at a point in my life where I needed these vibrations. Dogs will raise your vibrations. You can get in sync and in connection with your animal, and this is what has occurred with me and him, and he he didn't hesitate to help this boy. He didn't even know the boy. Uh, we we had seen, seen the boy in passing. Uh, he, sun, he, he has pet Sunshine a few times because everybody loves to play with Sunshine if they see him out in the courtyard or playing in the in the uh, street across, you know, the, there's a little dirt field across the way from where I live, and so kid, the kids will see him play, but not very many of them actually come over to play with him. I wish more would do that. Maybe they will now. But uh, anyway, uh, Sunshine didn't hesitate to help this innocent boy, and I was there immediately after, and Sunshine had the other dog pinned down. It was some sort of pit bull mix. I mean, he was actually bigger than my dog, and my dog uh, somehow got a hold of his neck, and Sunshine ended up with a couple of scratches on his belly and one behind his ear, but he didn't end up getting bit. And I don't know how this happened, because my dog is not a train to... Uh, I got him when he was about eight months old. He's not trained to attack or anything like this. So it was just his instincts and he took care of it. And I was able to pick the boy up and take him across the street to his parents. And I applied a concoction of, uh, I ha always have those cayenne capsules in my pocket. It contains cayenne, ginger, turmeric, and black pepper. And I opened up two of those. I, of course, asked his parents. I told them they needed to call an ambulance because I, at that point, thought that the cut was fairly deep and it probably needed stitches. But no, I'll la later find out that it didn't really need stitches, uh, but I asked his parents if I could pack his 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 leg with this these capsules, and I did, and so I really feel like that helped to remove some of the toxins. But anyway, that was my day today. So I, I've had an exciting day, and I have not juiced enough uh, because in this process I was going back and forth to it. His parents didn't have insurance, and they didn't want to call the they didn't want to take him to the emergency room, and so I just told him I would do what I could do to help help him, and and he's he's going to be fine. I don't think the dog was even rabid. Uh, the, the, it's a shame that people keep their animals on leashes all day long. This is abuse. Uh, but these 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 people shouldn't own animals. Should be illegal for people to own animals if they keep them chained up all day. It's insane. But anyway, let me go through. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to go down the rabbit hole with that. I just wanted to share it because that's what occurred to me today. I mean, I am so proud of my dog. You have no idea. He's a hero to me. He he pounced on this dog. I mean, for for a brief moment, it looked like he had turned into some sort of ninja attack dog. I've never seen anything like it. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know if letting him off the leash was the wise choice or not. But but he, he he ran, and I just let him go, and I followed after him. And I didn't know what was going on. I just heard the child screaming. And by the time I got over there, uh, he I could see that he was... Uh, going to get real aggressive with this dog because he went right into his back end to get him off the boy. I mean, he he plowed right into his back end and fell. The dog the dog flopped over. He let go of the boy instantly, and the dog flopped over. And then Sunshine immediately went for his neck, and. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. 
he was amazing. I mean, my dog is a hero, and and this boy was was freaking out, but he, of course he was very thankful that Sunshine showed up when he did. I mean, Sunshine got there quite a bit, uh, quite a bit before I did. I know I was running, uh, but Sunshine is super fast, so I really feel like this dog could have done some serious, serious damage to this boy's leg had he had a hold of it any longer. So I am super thankful. And see, that's how the universe works when you get in rhythmic pattern with it. You you get in sync with your animals. You get in sync with all of nature. You get in sync with the vibrations of love and divine things just happen. You don't have to worry. You don't have to live in fear, worry, chaos, confusion anymore. Get in sync with these divine vibrations. And to do that, you've got to silence your mind. You're not healing your condition now because your digestive system is constantly working. It's working all day long. Never gets a break. Never gets a break. Never gets a break. And then you add into this more toxins and stress and oxidative damage. And you're looking at a recipe for eventual disaster in the body. And this is the reason why a lot of people don't think clearly. They're connected to all their devices. They're connected to other low vibratory parasitic people. Uh, because oftentimes these souls will like to stay, uh, you know, in vibrations with, with other people that resonate similar to them. And we need to increase our vibrations and come up out of this mess. And to do this, you've got to know yourself. You've got to get to know yourself first. And to do that, you've got to disconnect from all this craziness. You've got to disconnect from the world to be able to reconnect to these divine vibrations because everything is working against us in this world, in this matrix to disconnect us. The coffee enema is going to get you connected right fast. I promise you that. I, I, this is what, this is how it helped me. Uh, the first time I did one and I expelled those toxins out, I felt so much better. I was on a high for about six hours. The next day I did one, I was on high for about eight hours. And, and no, this wasn't from the caffeine. It was, it was just a blissful vibration that was occurring within the body because I knew that I'd expelled out massive amounts of toxins and I literally just felt lighter. Uh, less fog in my brain. I mean, Try one of these and you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, don't be skeptical if you're not willing to open your mind up to the, the possibility of these being wildly beneficial for your vibrations and your body. I don't put this, don't put the, the coffee in a plastic in any form. This is my, I'm going to show you real quickly how I make mine. This is my pot right here and you'll notice there on the bottom of it, this is a big one. You'll notice there on the bottom of it that that is copper. Uh, design, get, get a pot specifically for your coffee. Uh, because you're going to stain it up with continual use. So get one specifically designated for the coffee enemas. And if you can get one, that's this is all stainless steel, but it's got a copper bottom. If you can get one with a copper bottom, uh, yeah, you're going to only increase. See, we've got to increase the copper and the zinc to increase the superoxide dismutase in the body. This is the reason why we're all sick today, because we don't get enough copper and zinc. We don't get enough potassium. We don't get enough magnesium. We don't get enough vitamin D. We're depleted in all these divine nutrients. So use a stainless steel. Do not use aluminum. Do not use Teflon. Boil your water for 15 minutes. You're going to get different instructions from me than everywhere, from everywhere else. I'm just going to tell you that right now. So figure out the method that works well for you and then just run with it. But I'm going to, I'm going to share with you ways to make this that I have personally experimented with and I've been doing coffee enemas for years. So, uh, boil your water for 15 minutes. Then put in your coffee. Uh, start with just a few, however much you're boiling, start with just a few, one to two tablespoons. Uh, for advanced conditions and later down the road when we're doing coffee enemas, you can put more than just two uh, heaping t tablespoons in. But start with, I always start with half of whatever the, the everyone else is recommending because we, we need to see how the body is going to react to this. Oftentimes people are extremely toxic. If you've got cancer or you've, you have put chemotherapy or you have taken prescription drugs, uh, the coffee enemas can be quite, quite dangerous if you're consuming large amounts of caffeine in the colon this way. So don't start with the full strength if your body is extremely toxic, and that's just a word of caution there, uh, because many people will have negative reactions with with the, with the loads and loads of coffee in the colon. Please know that after we're boiling this and we're making this concoction, we are diluting it 50-50 with, with a pure
purified, shungite infused water or distilled water, purified water. Uh, start your pot with purified water. Please know that the vibrations of the water affect the vibrations of the coffee. So if the co if the water is toxic, uh, the the coffee is going to be toxic. So don't start with tap water thinking you're going to boil out the fluoride. The fluoride only increases in intensity upon boiling. So this makes no sense to boil our water thinking we're distilling our water. Uh, the the key after you the key is you boil it you boil the water for 15 minutes and then put the coffee in then immediately after you put the coffee in turn the water down to a medium simmer we don't want this is a green coffee bean here we're using folks this is a bean that's not roasted or burnt that caffeine Sanor brand specifically uses a patented roasting process that that air roast the bean so this is a greener bean this is not a burnt and roasted bean so why then would we we want to burn our coffee when we're boiling it. Makes no sense. We just want to unlock. We want to envision unlocking the coffee and this is how the coffee is going to literally uh, unlock you. The so don't boil your coffee is my advice. Uh, bring bring the water to a boil and let it boil uh, for, for you know 10 or 15 minutes to make sure there's no impurities in whatever water we're using and then put the coffee in and turn the coffee immediately down to a simmer a medium simmer and leave the coffee in for five to seven minutes the instructions online are going to tell you 12 minutes and I'm going to tell you that this is a little bit too long from my experience this takes some of the phytonutrients out of the coffee uh, anytime we're using too much heat even in the essential oil extraction, some of these steam distilling processes are taking some divine phytonutrients out of our oils and essences. Uh, many of these things need to be cold pressed and cold extracted, uh, not not extracted using heat because this the heat can destroy some of the phytonutrient components within the essence. Uh, that's just my rant regarding that because it really gets on my nerves, the processing, a lot of this stuff. So just just leave your coffee in this medium simmer for five to seven minutes. When, when you put the coffee in, the water is still boiling. I mean, it's a rolling boil. So you are unlocking this bean, and then you're just infusing the water with this bean is what's occurring. And then let this cool completely. And then you're going to want to transfer it to a pitcher such as this. This is a quartz... Uh, crystal, uh, I recommend getting a nice quartz crystal because uh, clear quartz retains many, can, re can emit many high vibrations. Uh, I've got also got down in the bottom of this about 12 pieces of shungite stone. Shungite is, uh, let me show you my shungite. I've got a, I've got a, I've got a load of it. I've got it everywhere. So put, put 12 to 15 pieces of elite noble shungite in the bottom of your container and then pour your coffee in. You're going to watch me do it because I'm about to make this so that I can uh, do one tonight. Fill it up about half coffee, and then you're gonna. This is the. This is a strong solution here that I made. That that container that you saw that I used to boil my water in that that contained six uh, heaping tablespoons of coffee. That's a that's a lot of coffee. This that's way too much for beginners. But please know that that's enough for f three or four coffees. That that one batch right there is going to last me pretty much all week. Uh, it's better if you can make this fresh and just do it fresh each time. That's wildly wildly more beneficial. But a lot of times people don't have time for this. So I'll boil a pot at the beginning of the week and then I'll keep this refrigerated and keep some shungai stones in it, and I'll just pour it out and make it as I need it. And so that's what this is. In mine, this is for advanced healing here. You're not going to want to do this at home. What you're going to want to do is just fill the rest of this up with water. You're going to want to uh, put it in your in your bag. Put it in your bag. I recommend getting a little more, spending a little bit more money on a nicer rubber, flexible rubber bag. The ones that they sell at the CVSs are not real flexible and they break. The little plastic pieces on the on the ends and tips of them break all the time and seals come loose and people can have some bad experiences with these cheapy, cheapy bags. So that's, that's another rant regarding this because for a while I was spending uh, 15 bucks every couple of months on another bag thinking that that was the only route I could go until I went to a medical supply shop and found a nicer quality bag. And then I looked online and found this one. I love this one. This is a 3.2 liter. You'll notice, you'll, you'll notice the tip of mine. See how short that is? This is something else they're not going to tell you. Uh, 
when you when you do this coffee enema, you're simply laying back on your back. I usually have a pillow underneath my neck, and I have a pillow underneath my in the middle of my back where my abdomen is kind of extended up just a little bit, and then of course my knees are facing up towards the ceiling, and I'm grounded. I'm literally laying on a grounding sheet. I have a small little towel underneath my underneath my butt, underneath my opening, and I have a little bowl uh, above uh, in the middle of that. Uh, you 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 want to have a small little handy bowl because all you're going to do you're going to want to cut your cord on your bag to about probably about this long just estimate how long you need because advanced healing you're not going to want to hang the bag from a uh, from a shower curtain or from some sort of hook that's five feet away from you you're simply going to want to hold this and you're going to want to quickly squeeze these contents inside you and go about your meditation go about your day uh, I often can do a coffee enema very quickly, and everything, the whole process can take literally 20, 25 minutes. Uh, I don't have time to do you, The first time you do a coffee enema, uh, set aside your whole day. Uh, do it on a day where you're not going to have a lot of interruptions. That's my advice to you. Do it on a day where you can turn your phone off. We need we need to be outside of all of the EMFs. You need to build a Faraday cage wherever you're deciding to do a coffee enema. Build a Faraday cage in the, in your bathroom. Align your bathroom with copper foil. Uh, cover the outlets, the, the DC currents that are emitting from our outlets. Don't keep your fo- phone in your electromagnetic energy field. Try to protect the vibrations of all of these essences is what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. They, they, they need to be protected, and our body needs to be protected. This is how you heal the body. Uh, these coffee enemas are going to help you awaken to these other in, in harmful vibrations, by the way. You'll become more sensitive to the EMFs after you do a couple of months of coffee enemas. Uh, that's what happened with me. I'm highly, highly sensitive to toxins in the air, toxins in the water. I can know on heavy chemtrail days not to go out in it, or I'll, I'll cover my head with a hood and I'll keep my jacket on because I'm sensitive to it. And you will become too when your body becomes less toxic. The This is what I put in mine. Not for beginners. Don't try this at home. Uh, that is the Essiac. This is sheep sorrel, this is burdock, slippery elm, and Turkish rhubarb. And I put two, uh, nearly two full droppers full in. That's a lot. Uh, but I like my coffee strong. Today was a toxic day, and I know what my vibrations need to increase my vibrations. I, I do this frequently, and, and usually I don't use the same ingredients in with the coffee. Uh, Essiac is a wonderful addition to the coffee enemas. Uh, this is something else I put in my coffee. It's called Immune Support Liquid Concentrates. And all it contains is zinc, selenium, silver, and sulfur. This is what we need. This is what I was talking about. If you can break open, if you can get to where you can break open a couple of these and put the oil of the juice, a couple of these, and put that oil in with your coffee, man, you're really going to stimulate some healing with this. So I'm going to put one dropper full in of that. I'm going to put some Pau Darko in my coffee. I need some Pau Darko. That, that's, Pau Darko is antifungal, antimicrobial, antibacterial, antiparasitic. It's going to do everything. Since I'm doing a coffee enema in the evening, I'm going to put some calming herbs in. This is Le- Melissa Lemon Balm Blend. So I'm going to put a full dropper full of Melissa in that. I love Melissa. This is faux tea, this is hushu wu, this is a male hormonal balancing, uh, women too, but this is a hormonal balancing blend. It's going to block the uh, DHT in the body. Fulvic, ionic fulvic acid. Uh, I love to remineralize my coffee, so I'm going to pull, put a full dropper full. That is trace minerals, ionic fulvic acid, wonderful, wonderful product. Uh, if, if you if you just want to start including something in your coffee enemas after you've done them for maybe a week straight, uh, be, start with just the ionic fulvic acid. Buy it in a glass jar, and it needs to be organically sourced and not heated or treated or processed in any way. Uh, fulvic acid is a wonderful addition, as is gar as is garlic. 
uh, as is ginger, as is, cat. I'm going to put some cat's claw in mine, as is all that other stuff I just showed you, but please know that if you if you just prepare a coffee enema tomorrow and you include all these ingredients in it, you're going to have a severe, severe problem. Uh, so don't, don't, a word of caution with this is do not do what I am doing. This is for advanced, advanced healing here is what I'm, I'm trying to repair and re-stimulate. I'm trying to activate all of my DNA here with these coffee enemas, and this is what's occurring. So wonderful. The uh, the reason I cut the the cord on my bag is because I simply just like to hold the bag. The the if you're hanging it from a shower a curtain or a, or a specific hook on the wall, then you're going to have to get a lot of air out of the out of the hose. You're also not going to be able to. You're just going to let gravity push the the, the liquid inside you and I, I like to squeeze the liquid in myself and so I cut the I cut the cord on the bag and just simply hold the bag and I'm completely relaxed I'm, I am completely letting go uh, and I'm squeezing these contents inside me real quick it just takes a, four, three or four minutes to squeeze the contents in it, usually not even that long usually I can do it in about two minutes just squeeze it in real quick but the first time I don't recommend this the first time you're not going to want to squeeze it in so let it hang the first time and keep a cup underneath your your uh, opening and keep a towel there and get yourself grounded you can put some lavender on your abdomen if you want to you can diffuse some lavender in the room that's beneficial too to help you do this uh, because it's going to help you relax. Uh, the Allow for all of the air to run out of the hose. Make sure that no air goes up inside you. Very, very discomforting if you, if you allow for air to go inside you. So make sure that you eliminate all of the air from all of the hosing. Whether you're holding the hose, usually what I will do is I just tip that bag over. I'll just show you real quick. I tip my bag over and I will pinch off I will pinch off the end of it. You saw just a little bit of liquid float out of that and I just pinch that end of it off uh, and I the, the liquid excess that runs out of the bag goes inside the cup, the little bowl that I have there, and I just put that those contents back inside my uh, crystal bowl to be used again because that didn't go inside me. Uh, but the I found that cutting the bag, cutting the cord on the bag allows for more flexibility because when advanced healing, you want to get to where you're putting this coffee inside you where you're kind of rotating your, your pelvic uh, area. Uh, you, you, you will feel where, where all this coffee is going and you're w- gonna want the coffee to go in all the nooks and all the crannies. So I like to have the flexibility to move around while I'm putting this inside me because I like to kind of angle my, my pelvic area up sometimes while I'm putting in the coffee. They recommend you lay on your right side, and I don't recommend that. Lay flat on your back. They're also going to tell you you can have your butt facing up towards the sky, and just to put let gravity do the work and put this coffee in you. And this is not uh, this hasn't been effective for me. Please know that after you retain this for 15 minutes. You want to try to fully retain it for 15 minutes. Don't be discouraged if you can't do that the first time. Don't get upset with yourself. Many people cannot do it for a full 15 minutes the first time. But if you can, congratulations. You want to get to where you're giving yourself a full abdominal massage before you expel this coffee. Many times I will even do yoga. I'll, I'll, I'll put the coffee in me. I'll spend three minutes putting the coffee in me and then I'll do yoga. Or I'll hang upside down on my bars. Uh, I'll get, do, do some sort of inversion. Uh, stand on my head. Uh, you want to be getting the coffee into all the little nooks and crannies, but there again, a word of caution, don't start with all that. Just lay flat on your back and relax and let go. Uh, surrender to the vibrations of these co- of this coffee and uh, completely let go. Let the thought come and let the thought flow. Let the vibrations flow in the body, baby. This is healing your body. That's what you're going to be telling yourself as this is occurring. You're going to feel this peristaltic action working and you're going to want to get in rhythm pattern with it and that's how the coffee enemas are most beneficial don't have the TV on don't have uh, don't 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 have any kind of external noise on while you're while you're doing this please don't you're going to want to give yourself an abdominal massage, though. The, even even the very first time you coffee enema, before you expel the coffee and you're on the toilet or above the toilet, try to hold that in for one last little bit and give yourself a deep abdominal tissue massage. We've got to really work to remove some of the layers and layers of sludge and putrefaction that have backed up in the colon. 
So if you'll give yourself an abdo- a full abdominal massage before you expel the coffee. Now, when you expel the coffee, don't sit on the toilet like most people sit on the toilet with the feet on the ground. We're actually not sitting on the toilet correctly. You need to have a step stool, and your feet need to be propped up on the step stool. The, the, the colon needs to be at a proper angle for full extraction, uh, for all of the contents to be emptied. And this is the problem now as the bowels are not in proper position to eliminate because we've got our feet on the floor. Prop your, even when you're just having a regular bowel movement, you're going to want to prop your feet up on a little step stool. Research that. There's a lot of information about that online. We're not, we're not pooping correctly today. That's my, that's another little rant regarding this because you want to have your feet propped up on a, on a step stool to, to expel all of this coffee out. Many times, if you don't, the coffee will, some of this coffee will stay inside you. Now, this is perfectly fine if it stays inside you. What I'm going to tell you to do is just juice. Uh, juice again and, and juice again after that and then juice again after that and the coffee will come out. The the juicing will purge the excess coffee out, but we really don't want this coffee continuing to recirculate inside us. Please know that it is fine if it does this, but th- these toxins just recirculate and recirculate, and we have the potential eventually for some of these toxins to just reabsorb, and we don't want that. So try to get all of the coffee out, but don't be discouraged your first time. You can't you can't expel it all out. You may you may get up after your coffee enema and slosh around a little bit and be frustrated with yourself and don't don't give yourself a hemorrhoid by trying to push this out on the toilet just relax and let go and the coffee will come out when it's ready to come out uh, juice, juice again would be my advice because if you can follow this up immediately with a with a juice, apple, carrot, lemon, ginger, beet, a little bit of turmeric, a little bit of black pepper, th- yeah, this is what we want to do. This this S glutathione transferase system takes nutrients to run. In my opinion, you cannot do more than one a day of these coffee enemas and not juice. Uh, those that on the on the Gerson protocol are doing these five or six times a day and they're taking sixteen juices throughout the day because it takes many nutrients for this process to run. So. Please know that as well. Anyway, I think that I have covered most of it. Let me think about any questions that may arise. The uh, don't don't begin putting all of those herbs in your coffee. Just start with plain coffee and purified, distilled, shungite infused water. Just whatever water you're u- using. So fifty fifty. Uh, it's better if this coffee is actually a little bit warmer. Um, like body temperature, it's not it's not the best cold and it's not the best super hot. Now I will tell you, I've experienced uh, I've experimented some with this, and I have found that sometimes a little warmer is a little beneficial, and sometimes a little colder is beneficial. I like to I like to I like to stimulate the cold and the heat, but the most beneficial coffee enemas for me have, have been when the coffee is just slightly a little bit warm but not hot. Uh, so if you can make it fresh each time, it's going to be a little bit more effective, I believe. Don't boil your coffee. Uh, just let it simmer at a, at a medium heat for five to seven minutes. Uh, to, to, to try Later in your detoxification process, try boiling it for 12 minutes like the regular instructions tell you, and then go back to the five to seven minutes, and you're going to be able to tell the difference. I guarantee it. It's almost like we boil out some of these phytonutrient components inside the coffee by boiling the coffee for too long. So what I'm telling you is we're using a green coffee bean to start with, and we're simply unlocking the green coffee bean and immersing the divine phytonutrient components in with the water, and then we're putting this inside us, and it's running this divine antioxidant system. Uh, you're going to reverse some damage that you've inflicted on your on your body with these coffee enemas, so have a great day. Any questions that you have regarding this, leave a comment. I will check back on this video from time to time and try to answer comments, but don't please don't ask me questions unless you've seen some of my other videos. This is going to be part two of advanced healing through parasite and nanoparticle removal referring to coffee enemas. I'll probably do a couple other videos, uh, short videos about how to coffee enema uh, for the masses to watch, but this is for my subscribers. This was requested and I wanted to go through the, all of the specifics and all of the details about coffee enemas. Now, let me let me tell you one more thing. The, I can't stress enough how much this needs to be a meditational thing. I can't stress enough how you need to you need to surrender to these vibrations. This is the most important thing because this is how the coffee is going to stimulate the healing reaction that the body can naturally produce on its own. 
That's what this coffee is doing. This coffee is literally unlocking your vibrations. So you need to let go to it. Uh, do not do this on a day where you where you uh, cannot uh, just meditate and relax. You're going to notice a high for after you do this. You're probably going to have a ton of energy after you do your very first one. Or you might be a little lightheaded when you first get up, but you'll you'll, you'll notice your brain is less foggy. Uh, and then after you're lightheaded for just a brief moment, you'll probably have a lot of energy. That's usually what happens. Uh, but don't be discouraged if you can't retain it for the full 15 minutes. Build up to, to where you're retaining it for the full 15 minutes, meaning the first time, if you can only retain it for five minutes, try to hold it for seven or eight the next time, and then a little bit longer than time after that, and build up to doing it where don't expect your body to be able to go into this full force like I'm describing it is what, what I'm trying to say with that, because you'll, you'll be disappointed with yourself because it won't be able to do it. Uh, so don't, don't, expect, don't expect your vibrations to get in rhythmic pattern with all of this at the very beginning. This is advanced healing here I'm talking about. So you want to have the body fairly detoxified before you even begin to incorporate the coffee in them. And you want to be juicing. You want to have uh, you want to have been taking milk thistle and some sort of Essiac blend to detox and stimulate the detoxification of the colon and the liver. And then step it up and start to include the coffee enemas. And this is how the enemas are going to be wildly beneficial in my opinion. Juice and juice in abundance while you do this. Have a great day.